So I don't know how many people have given me shit about doing doing my uh, edge banding with my little iron here. Like I've done it this way forever. Like I grew up building furniture with my dad, stepdad, and uh, we did it the same way, you know. And I've had the Festool people out here. Like they've shown me their their uh, their edge band machine. It's pretty dope, man. But I, I just can't justify the money, you know. Like I'm sure it works great, you know. But man, edge banding's not that bad. Like there's worse things. I got this nice little two pound roller, man. This thing works great. So anyway, um, stuff that I got coming up. So I got this crazy Pagoda China cabinet that I built. I built a prototype um, last year and uh, sold it right away to one of my super clients. And uh, it's pretty sick, man. So I got to build another one onto route number two. So hopefully this next one will uh, go better than the first one. The first one was a bitch to build. I'm not, a, a great, I'm not great at making hoods, but uh, I'm gonna get good at it because anyway, these things pay, they, they pay the bills. But, um, but anyway, it's a cool looking piece. It's got some awesome fret work on it and it's uh, very unique, you know? So if you want to get into the furniture game and you want to uh, be able to make any kind of money at it, you got to make unique stuff. You got to design things that are really cool because truth is, is woodwork in and of itself ain't that hard. You know, it's not like somebody can't put some tools in their garage and uh, come up with some, some cool stuff, you know? So it's really important that if you're going to um, get into the game, you know, it's like you better bring something unique. You know, and that's kind of a, people don't want to hear that sometimes, you know, but if you're making the same old shit, good luck, man. You're going to struggle. You better, you better look like Brad Pitt, you know, or have some kind of crazy insider because it's, uh, it's a tough game to be in. So anyway, I got that coming up. I've also got to build a top for this uh, crazy diamond credenza that I built, which I'll show you as well. Um, I'm working on the, I did the model for that and I, I passed it around social media the other day, but, uh. I gotta get that done, so that's kind of on my docket for next week. So I'll show you some more of these, these crazy freaking things that I'm always building. And man, that's what you gotta do. You know, you really gotta push the limits of what you can build and, and what everyone else is building, man, go a different direction. Because again, it's not hard, you know, to make furniture. It's not hard, especially not hard to build cabinets, right? Most people, all they wanna do is hire a programmer, program some shit on a CNC router, and then cut those parts out and have somebody assemble them, right? They find the cheapest labor they can. They get those things assembled in like West Virginia, you know, or you got a lot of people that are actually, they're starting to, um, they're starting to send their designs over to Egypt, right? Egypt's a big place and you got, uh, um, you got Vietnam's a big place for getting furniture made. Anyway, they make all that shit over there and then they put it in a crate and, or excuse me, a, a container and they send it over the ocean and I bring it back here to the States and then they sell it, you know, and the markup on that stuff's crazy because a lot of these countries don't have the regulations that we do. They don't have the safety uh, regulations, the health regulations, the insurance regulations, the transportation regulations, you know, it's, it's wild, you know, it's, just, it's completely unfair game to be quite honest with you, but it is what it is. So if you're going to make it in society today as a furniture maker, like I said, you got to bring something that is unique, okay? You gotta bring something that's unique, and um, that's kind of what I'm talking to you about right now, and showing you some of the things that I have in the pipeline. And you have to basically cater to rich people, you know, which is, uh, an un again, something that people may not want to do. If you want to sell to middle class people and lower class people, like, you gotta get your stuff made overseas, or you gotta have it all assembled in some of these cheap states and then cut on a CNC router and make it all out of MDF and particle board because those are the only materials that you can get cheap enough and those are the only production methods that are cheap enough to sell to um, middle and lower class people, you know. So anyway, that's what I got going on. Um, I hope you like this, this little look around the shop. You know, like I said, I spent a day or two just kind of filming a few things that I'm working on. Um, like I said, I got a pretty big operation, do about a million dollars a year. We sell furniture, we sell hardware, we sell um, services. I mean, we got all kinds of things, all kinds of different uh, revenue streams. And uh, it's, how you, it's just how you gotta make it. Like there's just not a good, there's not a great easy way to make money in furniture. Like I know people in the game that do millions of dollars a year uh, making custom furniture. And um, truth is, is they hate it. You know, they want out of it. 
and um, that's just that's just how the game is, you know. It's hard to, it's hard to make money um, as a custom furniture maker even because the projects take a long time. There's a lot of engineering. There's a lot of procurement issues. There's a lot of back and forth with designers or um, architects or, or whatever. And it just, it just gets to be a shit show, you know? So that's why I'm always telling people like, get really good at designing furniture. Design stuff that's really unique, that's striking, that grabs people's attention and then market the shit out of it. Like market, like put every dollar you can into Facebook ads, Google ads, um, any traffic you can and just market the shit out of it. And it, unfortunately, it just takes a lot of time. You know, you're gonna spend, you're gonna spend probably years trying to build up some kind of a name and probably have to work for somebody else while you do it. But, but um, once you do, you know, it's, um, there's something called the Lindy effect. Basically it's, you, you, you reach escape velocity uh, to where your name's out there enough that you kind of have almost like a floor in the amount of business that you have uh, the opportunity to take, um, which is really helpful, you know? So anyway, hope you like this. Well, let me know if there's things you guys want to, you want me to show you, want to hear about projects that kind of interest you. Like I said, I'm an open book. Um, got a big operation, been here for seven years at this point. I'm doing good. We do high gloss lacquered furniture. You know, you can go to the resplendentcrow.com and see everything that we make. Um, you can go to modernwoodrunner.com. If you want to look at like uh, parts and things like that for like, like I sell faux bamboo trim. I got legs and different kinds of parts on their drawings and stuff like that. You know, the typical shit. So anyway, I'll try and post these. I'll try and make these. Um, maybe I can make one of these a week and just kind of, like I said, get a couple videos of what I'm working on um, kind of throughout the day, things I'm putting together, issues that I'm dealing with and uh, be kind of fun, you know? I mean, a lot of people I think have, um, they do a lot of woodworking projects. They're, they're more, they're better at editing and getting video than actually making shit. You know, they're really good at reviewing things, but they don't have enough volume to really tell if something works. You know, that's one of the things that I never quite understood about all these people on YouTube. It's like, how do you get to be a YouTube personality when you don't really make much? You know, it's like I turn over hundreds of pieces a year, you know, I mean, thousands, if you include all the vintage stuff that we work on. I mean, it's insane. Um, so if you want to know like what really works and what tools actually work and what you know methods are best. Like, I feel like someone's a little more of a high production type environment would have those answers, you know, but I don't know. I just, like I said, I'm kind of new to the whole video thing and I'm trying to put really interesting stuff out on here. You can see on my page, um, I've got furniture that nobody builds, right? And, and a lot of people say, well, yeah, because nobody wants that furniture. Like I literally have a million dollar business because of that furniture.